welcome back to the channel. I'm the Crimson Canadian Mactor, and today, guys, we're going to be doing a champion spotlight on the Dark Ninja Shadow Links. I've had a, quite a few of my viewers at Twitch over ask me to do this video, so we're going to be doing it today. Sorry, it's taken some time to get it up. I've been busy with the charity stream and all that. But on that, guys, stay tuned. We're going to get right into it. Alright guys, so when it comes to Shadow Link, she is a Dark Ninja. She is an MR unit. Her subclasses are Dragoon, I believe it is, and Samurai. Um, she's a very strong, very, very strong unit. She gets a very good TMR, which gives you HP, attack, agility, and crit. And it has the chance to grant paralysis, which is going to be very good for keeping units in place. She is a highly mobile, highly, highly damaging uh, unit. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over her job tree. So, some of her main jobs here are going to be her ultimate. It's also going to be her uh, Utesimi, which significantly raises her uh, evasion. But Illusion is going to be better because it raises her evasion and allies for three turns. She gets Dragon Sand, which raises her own jump. Not the greatest one. Um, she gets Hayate, moves to user to target panel. Again, okay, okay, good for mobility, good for getting close to units. But then again, she is a an assassin. You don't want to be close to someone without doing damage. I runner is a shadow runner blade soul with dragon blade and sub command dragoon. The dragon's blade actually has a chance of absorbing damage dealt and counterattacking. So it's gonna if she does eventually get hit, she's gonna have a chance to absorb some of the damage and not instantly die. Her her skill tree and her um, her stats are a lot of um, damaging, a lot of dexterity, a lot of agility. Blade Soul is gonna raise her attack and evasion rate, but it's gonna lower her defense. And her shadow runner is gonna raise her agility and her luck. The other ones are okay, not the best one. HP up, again, she's not a high HP character, so it's not one we'd be going for. Third eye is the chance to evade, or chance of raising evasion if she gets hit. Again, you, if she gets hit, she's usually going to die. She is a pretty squishy unit. So that's one, um, again, Dragon's Blade, I find, is the best one. So Dream Within a Dream is her ultimate ability. It is a three-hit damage and minimum to target with high chance of critical hit. So this is going to be very good for chaining. She also gets high end, which is a samurai move, and it can go through walls. It can hit through um, obstacles. A very good damaging item, and so is Anton, another very good damaging item that can hit through walls. So again, she's a very good high damage dealer who can hit in many di many different scenarios. She could also get to a lot of different areas because she has a high jump. Um, she can also get. As you can see, horizontal jump and jump, which has a, vo a wide range of be able to attack. I think it says five five squares in either direction. Um, but the, th the thing with jumps is it has a timing. If you are doing actual PvP, they have the chance to move out of the way. Now, if you're doing PvE, they're not going to jump out of the way. They're not going to move out of the way. My Rams has done it where a Thang Craig came in. He used his jump. He attacked. He could have moved. He stood still and died. So be careful with jumps, especially in PV PVE. But if you're in controlling it in PV or PVP, sorry, if you're controlling it in PVP, very good. PVE not so good. Um, so with her, I want to, as of right now, I'm, I've got her trust mastery on. I like her trust mastery. I mean, it's not going to grant her the um, the slash attack, which like uh, the Sasuke's katana can't. And Sasuke's katana is uh, samurai's. Um, whichever the weapon is, I can't remember which whatever, whatever the ninja weapon is, but. I run with the Trust Mastery, I run her with a uh, Mirage Vest to boost her evasion, and then I have a ring to help boost her defense and SPR, so hopefully if she does get hit, there's a possibility that she won't die. Again, defense and SPR determine your physical defense and your magical defense, so having those up are going to increase your chances of surviving attacks, especially with the Dragoon um, counterattack ability that has the chance to absorb damage. Again, it's going to absorb damage means you're not going to take the full brunt of the damage and you're going to be able to counterattack. So hopefully, if you do get hit, you will survive and counterattack, do a lot of damage, and then you can actually chain. Now, pairing-wise, right now she's not on a lot of my, my, my teams right now because I'm saving her for a lot of chaining abilities, a lot of uh, specific PvP teams, and I just don't have the PvP teams together right now. I'm waiting for Katone to come out and I'm waiting for Whisper to come out. Uh, I'm also waiting for Venaria to come out because I'm going to run a, a high damaging, high evasion team. But the one thing I did want to try is if you have Ramza and you have Shadlinks, I had the notion that because Ramza is a slasher and Shadlinks is a slasher, I had the notion, well, okay, Shadlinks has a three hit combo, Ramza has a three hit combo. What happens if we try to pair those two combos? Are they going to chain? So, I mean, if they do chain, it's going to make it very easy for you to do um, upper level battles because you can then put Ramza if you have them. Again, if you have Ramza and you have Shadowlings, you can then put them together and hopefully they will chain together. Because getting that chain up uh, from two hits, so uh, I believe it can go up to maybe five chain or six chain if it actually does it, it does its job right. So easy to. I have lots of trust masters right now, uh, but uh, we're not going to get into that. 
So this is the team I'm going to try it out with. I'm um, running the Final Fantasy Tactics team um, with Orlando, Ramza, and Gafgorian. I have Shadowlinx, and I've got Frederica. Now, I did want to wait for Frederica to be a level 99 before I got this video because I wanted to see her damage output, her skills, all that kind of stuff. I didn't want to give you like a beginner spotlight in case you were like kind of like, oh, uh, maybe yes, maybe no. But uh, I wanted to get a full flight spotlight on this girl, and I wanted to show you damage. Now, her damage a bit. I noticed how high it was when I was doing PVE, because she was one of my main PVE team until I pulled Ramza Orlando and I got Gafgorian. And right now I'm leveling them up, so that's why she's not on my main team. But when I start doing like raids and dungeons and towers, she will be on my main team. Again, she's got high evasion, she's got good chaining, she's got high attack. Very, very strong character. A lot of mobility, too. Like, she will turn cycle a lot of times before the enemy team goes. She has very, very high speed. And again, she can reach places others can't because of her jump ability, her ability to um, jump because of her ninja subclass. Or ninja subclass, her ninja main class. She can jump high terrain. So she, if you have, like, archers up on, like, a tall mountain, she doesn't have, she doesn't have to walk around. She can just jump on top and go right for them. And with her shuriken, anton, and her jumps, she can reach them even sooner. And one of the things you can run on her too is the, I think it's this one here, the Bagulian Witch, which will reduce the cast time. But also there's a UR that uh, is very good on her too. I don't have the one. I can't remember what it's called, but uh, it's a very good one as well. You can put on her. Again, reducing your cast time if you're going to run the Dragoon uh, subclass. Again, I, I would suggest the Dragoon subclass because it's higher uh, mobility and higher damage output, especially with the horizontal jump and the jump. I had seen her jump when my jump was at level 1, I think she was level 90, it did like almost 2k damage. And that was, the jump wasn't leveled up, she wasn't fully maxed out, and she didn't have this, she never trust master on, she never gear on. So I mean, she's got again, a very high damage output, and she's hard to hit, she's very mobile, she can get around terrain very easily, and she's very good pairing with like, again, a very high evasion team. Uh, so put a pairing with like a uh, an invasion team such as like Katon when Katon comes out you have gonna have two ninjas You also pair with Venaria too when Venaria comes out because again, she's gonna have the assassin uh, Double gunner, so she's gonna be able to do a lot of stuff with them as well The other one I noticed too you can do is if you wanted to run a high evasion team Is to bring Medina now I know Medina love you like oh Medina is not the you know She's just a PvE team, but she's got ninja subclass She's got some good evasion in her kit and if you use, if you are lucky enough to have a Shiva card, put the Shiva card on the Medina. It's going to raise the evasion of the entire team even more. Again, the whole concept of that team is to not get hit. So the higher the evasion, the more ability to move. Again, Medina's got a lot of good mobility too, because again, she gets the Ninja subclass, she gets Shadow Runner, so she's very, very good uh, with the team. And that's the team I'm kind of mulling over right now, because again, I want Shiva to be using the card. I want to use my new. Um, House of Evolve card, the uh, agility card, and then possibly a slash attack card, maybe uh, Echoing Screams, or uh, if I want to get someone even higher agility, I could use my uh, Secret Orders card because it gives you agility as well. So let's watch here. I wanted to do the E-Free Battle because I needed to finish it so I can get his last thing. I wanted to see if it was going to change. So um, that was just the basic chains right now because I wanted to make sure that uh, our Ramza and Shaolin were, were together. So let's see here. I go down, I use her dream within a dream so change it two times let's see what happens when he's roms this one chip a blow and lo and behold it changed so if you want a good easy chaining combo if you've got romza you've got shed links and they're both 99 very easy to chain it up to plus five so when you get into those higher tier battles higher tier raids those two are going to become in very clutch for getting those high chaining abilities in because a lot of people think oh Orlando, Ramza, Gafgorian, Engelbert, Rob, those those three. But Shadowlinks is going to give you a more more of a chance to get those higher chains to do that more increased damage. And with her increased evasion, she's going to be harder to hit. So anyways, once we get more um, content out, like the raids, the dungeons, the towers, we'll do more content with Shadowlinks. This is, again, this is a little bit more of a beginner's guide. Uh, I said it wasn't at the start, but it kind of is because it can't really show our off too, too much until we get that kind of stuff. Um, we will show off some PvP once I get the team ready as well. But other than that, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys see the potential of Shadow Links and you build her. So other than that, guys, have a good day and stay chilly.